You're listening to The Topcast, the original podcast for growth-minded instrumental music and voice teachers since 2015, with your host, Tim Topham. Our mission at Top Music is to empower instrumental music and voice teachers to find and nurture their innate creativity so that they can teach lessons that are innovative, integrated, and inspiring, and that will have a positive, lifelong impact on their students. Join us each week as we interview teachers and creators from around the world and unpack fun and exciting ideas to maximize your teaching and studio business success. Hey teachers, it's Tim Topham here. Welcome back to the Topcast. So, are you, like many teachers around the world, starting to get a bit frustrated with students who don't seem to care very much anymore, who don't seem to practice, whose parents don't seem to really be particularly engaged? who are just sort of ticking along, making little progress, and you're like tearing your hair out because you actually don't really know what's changed, what you've done, why things aren't working. I totally hear you. And in today's episode, we're going to start unpacking some solutions to that and tell you about how you can get more help in that very area. Now, before we get into the content today, I just wanted to let you know that we have opened up our voicemail inbox and you're welcome to leave us a message. If you've got any suggestions for guests, if you've got questions that you'd like me to answer in a future Q&A or you'd just like to say hi, then leave us a voicemail. Just head to topmusic.co slash message and you can click the button and we'll get a message from you. So, in today's episode, we're going to be unpacking an approach to teaching which has revolutionized lots of teachers studios around the world. And it's called whole body learning. And the main exponent of this approach is the amazing Paul Myatt, who we're going to be interviewing today. Now, one of the things that we're going to be talking about is a course that we're running, a live online cohort-based course at the very start of August in 2024, if you're listening to this at the time that we release it. And we would like to give you a very special $20 off the course price. Now, if you'd like to get access to that after you've heard what we've been talking about today, and I'm sure you will because we are about to unpack some absolute gems for you, then wait until the end of the episode and I'll be giving you a coupon code which you can use to access that $20 discount. My guest today, Paul Myatt, is well known for his ability to teach and educate all levels and abilities in a diverse range of skills from music to swimming. Paul is a founding director of Forte School of Music, a unique and highly successful music education network with over 4,000 students in Australia, New Zealand and the United Kingdom. Paul's greatest passion is encouraging lifelong music making through music education and the positive effect this has on people's lives. Welcome back to the show, Paul Myatt. Great to see you. Thank you very much, Tim. It's been a while. It has. I think you may have the record for the most podcast interviews. So, I was going back through, I think this is where, what we did, we had you on episode 33, this is going way back, this must be 2016, How Group Lessons Can Transform Your Studio, episode 58, when we talked about our Transform Your Teaching workshop tour, I think it was episode 150 or 200, you were part of the expert roundup, and then more recently, episode 323 was all about a done-for-you group teaching curriculum with you and um, Gillian. And then you also appeared on the guitar podcast talking about whole body learning approach for guitar teachers. I know. Who would have thought? <laughs> <laughs> so, so great to uh, have you back. And you were one of our very first Inner Circle expert teachers and you were really important as I was just building the community right from the start. So, thank you very much for being there for so long and, and helping me get top music off the ground, really. You know, Tim, it was such an honor to have the opportunity to share all those ideas and things about teaching and pedagogy with other teachers. And it's just been fantastic. So thank you for, for your job. I know we probably, I've spent my life working with and helping teachers. And I think you probably have done the same and, you know, really helping teachers to develop their skills. And that's my passion. And it's why I'm also working towards my PhD at the moment. So that's ex- exciting for me. Well, you'll have to tell people more about that perhaps later on. But uh, today, we're going to be unpacking a brand new live course that we are running right at the start of August this year, which is all about your passion, which is whole body learning approach, particularly to teaching beginners. And I, I guess we could say that teaching beginners after and continuing some of the ideas about no book beginners. So, perhaps because I know you actually uh, suggested this idea to me, can you share what brought us together to put this course um, out for teachers? Sure, Tim. Um, I think 
in your book, you set out sort of three foundational mindsets. And um, the first one being a more holistic approach to teaching, you know, integrating music skills and beyond reading. And um, now from the research I've been doing, um, I'm convinced that musical skills actually help to develop and enhance reading. And the second one you said was uh, student-centered learning. Well, it's all, it's not just about what we want. It's all about our students. So we have to focus on their interests and goals to keep them motivated. You know, and I've, I mean, you probably have seen this as well, but I've seen so many posts in Facebook groups, um, piano teacher Facebook groups, like I've tried everything to maintain their interests and things like, are you seeing under 10s who have poor behavior and bad attention spans? Well, there's actually a reason for this. And we have a new cohort of beginners called Generation Alpha. And these kids were born since 2010. Incidentally, the same year the iPad arrived. And these kids are often called the iPad generation. And, you know, most of them could swipe before they could speak. Scary <laughs> so, thought, isn't it? It is a scary oh. thing. So all this research um, uh, from McCrindle, who identified that the widespread use of integrated integration of mobile technology has brought about all these changes of reduced attention spans. And so we need to be able to get these um, kids, the focus of these kids. And, um, you know, we know this poses a real issue for us as piano teachers, because we know that learning a musical instrument requires focus and attention. And it brings me back to what you said, we need a student-centered approach, because this information reveals the um, that teachers today, from beginners through to intermediate students, they're going to rely on different teaching strategies to engage them and retain them. And as you said, we also need to have a creative approach that encourages creativity. And whole body learning does all those three things from a holistic approach to building musical skills to be a musician and student-centered focused teaching um, on the students so that we can really achieve their goals, but also develop their own creativity. So I think all of those things are covered and they're just an extension of what you've done in No Book Beginners. Mm, yeah. And it was really great to, to hear how this approach, this whole body learning approach can really help teachers take the ideas that I set up in No Book Beginners which really is only designed to be used for the first maximum kind of 10 weeks or, you know, 10, wor 10 weeks worth of lessons, how they can continue those ideas going when you move into the method book and then as you add supplementary repertoire. And so this is why it's just so great to be working with you, Paul, because you have the answer to that question. And I've actually been <laughs> asked teachers this question. It's like, okay, well, what, what happens after no book beginners? Uh, you know, I can go into my method book, but I want to keep these creative approaches and, and all the clapping and singing and tapping and chanting and all that. I want to keep that going here, teachers listening. This is how you do it. And that's what we're going to be sharing in this um, course coming up. But something else that I thought, it, thought of when you were speaking about the difference in kids, and that's not only do they need to focus to learn an instrument, they've got to focus for a long time. And uh, sadly, as much as I love TikTok, I mean, it really has melted the brains of everybody hasn't it? it's like, <laughs> and we're going to have some strategies for actually how to cope with short attention spans aren't we absolutely you know and some of the research i've been looking at is um, also from some cognitive neuroscience and there's a, a wonderful french cognitive neuroscientist called stanislas dehan and he has a really wonderful model for education and for learning and he starts with attention We've got to grab their attention. So we've got to, we really need to make sure they're looking at us and we're looking at them. You know, traditionally in a piano lesson, we're sitting side by side. So our brains are actually cued into looking at people and uh, looking at their eyes and their mouths. So that's what our brains are cued into. And even look at a baby. What are they looking at? Your eyes and your mouth. And the same thing. So if we want to get that attention, we need to, put the devices away and get them to look at us and then we can then um, start the engagement because once you've got their attention, we need to engage them. So his second part of his model is engagement. And we need to be using the whole body. 
and this is where whole body learning comes in. You know, we um, we need to be moving and singing, and we need to be listening to music so that we can really develop those skills. And the next part of his model is error detection and feedback. And we know how important in music lessons is. I mean, do it again, do it again, do it again. Here's what's wrong, <laughs> fix that. <laughs> yeah, why we need to fix that up. So that feedback that and, and timely feedback is so important to, to give them that opportunity to fix it up so that they aren't learning mistakes. And then the last one is consolidation. And, of course, that is practice. And uh, as we know, the more that they practice, the better that they get. But the other thing is that what happens when they keep playing the same thing over and over and over again is we lose attention. So that circle comes back. So we need to grab <laughs> the attention again. <laughs> yeah. And that, I, I guess, uh, consolidation too. Another thing that I have struggled with in my own lessons is consolidating the material taught in one lesson in the next lesson. So, so reviewing material, I'm not always good at. And sometimes I'll just keep adding more new stuff without consolidating. So I think the reminder for me there is, yes, consolidation for the student is about their practice. Consolidation for me as a teacher is about making sure I don't move too fast and we embed those skills deeply. Is that something that you've considered in the research as well? Absolutely. That That's really, really critical. And, but also, how do they do it at home? You know, like, uh, you Poorly. Know, especially for beginners. <laughs> <laughs> I know, well, beginners, they, you know, they had a fantastic lesson. They come back the next week and you say, and how did you go? Did you practice? And they went, oh, yeah, we practiced three times. And, you know, their lesson was on Monday and they practiced on Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, first thing Monday morning, that panic practice. Do you think that they remembered anything in five days? <laughs> <laughs> so right. had a whole week of school. <laughs> and one of the things that I, I think is so critically important that we often leave out in piano lessons is that the use of music and using music to learn music. And we know that we remember things through music. Like, you know, if you've got married or, you know, your 21st birthday, your favorite song, your the 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 uh, the wedding dance that you, the music for the wedding dance at, at, at your ceremony and things like that. We remember those things so well. And we know that old people in nursing homes will get up and sing. These people who, who they can't remember Might anything. Might not be able to. Yeah. 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 But they, they know all these words to mm, songs. Mm. And it's because music helps um, solidify those memories when we're actually learning. So if children are using music to learn music, then whilst a lot of people are thinking, oh, well, they're just really developing their ear and not their eye, that is the case. They can, but you can you develop the eye as well. But Suzuki had, had that idea a very long time ago, and so did Orff and Delcros and Kadai. I'm glad you brought those up because in the Top Music Mag this month, uh, which is at topmusic.co slash magazine, we are featuring a variety of instructional methodologies. I had to look that word up to try and work out the name. That's what Wikipedia told me. So uh, this is talking about Kadai or Suzuki, the approaches. Would you put whole body learning in that same category? I would because whole body learning is based on Orff, Delcros and Kadai. And the, the difference is that Orff, specifically Orff and Kadai, were generally used for classroom instruction. So they're not specifically instrumentally uh, for instrumental lessons. And so what we've done is taken the concepts and approaches um, and taken them over to whole body learning and integrated those into and developed them for piano lessons. You know, and and ORF is, is a really... Um, it's a very well planned approach of integrating music, um, movement, and speech, and it focuses on learning by doing. Oh goodness, that's a novel thought, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and definitely not reading them playing. And so, what we take from Orf is that learning needs to be sequential and scaffolded, and it's scaffolded through multi sensory activities that help embed the learning in the body. And this is called sensory motor integration. And that's basically what we're doing in whole body learning. We're taking 
those ideas, um, the movement. And, you know, movement for movement's sake is not going to progress playing the piano. You know, that's the, that's the difference between ORF and, and say, whole body learning. Whole body learning is designed specifically for playing the piano or playing a musical instrument. Off activity, music is important and music helps you keep the beat and helps you learn lots of things. But all of the movement that we use in whole body learning is designed to prepare the body for playing. So all of the activities are going to help in preparing the body for playing. And so you can do lots, lots of movement activities, but they might not be necess- necessarily beneficial for learning. So that's the difference between what we're doing at whole body learning and what, say, an all for um, Del Crow's approach is. Got it. Top Music Pro enables you to be a pro in your own studio because you don't have to reinvent the wheel and you don't have to make up all the answers yourself. You have support. I think of Top Music as the pot of gold at the end of a rainbow. This site is the whole pot of gold and there's gold pieces in there that I didn't even know existed. I am actually teaching a full studio. They're coming online from miles away. So I am certainly thriving. So what Tim has done is build a global community of piano teachers who are interested, who are engaged. And when you become part of this community, you feel empowered. My life is different now because I'm not just in an isolated little studio. I have learned that there are other people out there going through very similar learning curves and sharing these ideas. I've really gained a lot of skill sets where my teaching is far more creative, far more innovative. I have resources so that I can add to it things that I didn't know. My life and my business are different now because I have the three things that I really wanted, less stress, more money, and more time. It's gonna be fun. Like, I got excited about being a piano teacher. It's revolutionized everything that I do. I think I've become a more thoughtful teacher, a more organized teacher. The quality of my teaching has deepened. I feel like I can do this. I feel a sense of hope. I love the creativity it fosters and the openness to thinking outside the box, and it's energizing. Joining Top Music really solidified that. Like, no, this is your career and you can make a career out of this. That has really helped me be proud of what I do. It's made such a tremendous impact on the way I think about teaching. It keeps your mind open when you have so many ideas. My best win from being on Top Music Pro is just having a lot more peace of mind as a teacher and as a business owner. It just gives me that less <laughs> less amount of hours that I have to do with research and everything. It's a really good place to uh, spend a few pounds, a few bucks a month and um, what you get from it far outweighs what you what you have to pay into it. My biggest win with Top Music Pro was increased student retention and increased income. I have a lot more confidence in how I'm teaching and I have the resources that I need when I do have questions. I probably went from about um, 35 students to maybe like 65. I ended up doing three classes and I had a waiting list. If I hadn't signed up with Top Music Pro, I probably wouldn't have realized that teaching piano is a real job and you can build your whole career around it. Well, let's build on that theme. Can you give us an example of what whole body learning would actually look like or sound like for that matter in the studio? Why don't I give you an example of what what, what it wouldn't look like? So if we were to learn this song. Nice, simple, basic student piece. Now, the student could go, put the music up in front of them and go, what's the first note? Oh, it's... um, uh, it's a C, okay, and um, well, what's the second note? And then C, D, E, F, oh, it's a G. And then what's the next note? Does it go up or down? Uh, it goes down and it's uh, an E. And how many are there? Oh, three. Okay, let's, so I'm going to point to them, you play them. C, then G, and then three E's. Well done. 
So we could do that, and but it's not musical. It's it's not it's not making music. Alternatively, we could do an activity. We're listening to music and we do some actions. So we might do some actions on our body where we're touching our toes for the C and our head for the G and our middle and our hips for the E. So along with a backing track. So we can go D, G, E, 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 C, G, D, 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 C, G, E, E, E. G, F, E, D, C, D, C, C. I hope everyone was doing the actions at home. Good. <laughs> so you can then take that. All right, so we've, we've done the C, G, and then I would take my the student, so we've done it on our body. We've listened to it. Um, I would then put it onto a set of chimes. So Like a little mini a, glockenspiel. Like a little mini glockenspiel. Now, what's the point of moving it to that instrument? Well, that's a really good question because that instrument lays out the notes in the same order as the piano from left to right. And we also got to remember that sheet music is a vertical representation of pitch. So we're turning the vertical into horizontal. Quite a complex mathematical problem for a six-year-old or seven-year-old or an eight-year-old, for your beginners anyway. I have, I have, have a, I have a vivid remem- memory of teaching an adult student when I first started out in my twenties, and uh, him saying, just could not understand how this whole music caper was working and how to be able to read the music. Anyway, I took the music and I turned it on its side, and he went, "Oh, I get it." <laughs> so, so we've gone to the the bells, the chimes. Yep. I was also, because you, you said the words or you sang the word, the notes, would students be doing that as well as doing the movement or is that too many things at once? Absolutely. And funnily enough, when they're doing it along with a backing track, they tend not to worry about the singing so much. And the other thing is that it doesn't matter whether they sing or say. So even if they go, I don't sing, you know, those boys, I'm not going to sing. Well, you just need to say it then. So C, G, E, 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 C, G, D, D, D. That's fine. So by that stage, we've already heard this. So the song go is played twice in each track. So we've now heard it four times. And I would be just doing a small fraction of it. So I would just play. So that bit. And I would then find that in the music and go, how many times does this appear in the music? And all right, and just play that little block. But we're playing the block in the whole thing. So that's a chunk. So we're, we're going from the whole down to a part, and then we come back and put the whole thing in, a, in the whole again. And so that would be the first lesson. They only play that much. C, G, E. But the, the other thing is because you have, you've done so many different activities with it, they've heard it. Like their oral recognition of it, it would be far more than, yeah, as you say, when we just go straight to the reading and start playing. It's like, no, they've got this in their head. It's going to be the thing that they sing that night when they're you know, having their shower or bath or whatever, right? It's going to be stuck in their head. Exactly, exactly. The other thing that, the other thing that happens is they then start to teach themselves. So they've take the music, go home, practice those, uh, C, G, E, 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 and play along, with the, play along with the music at home. And, and then they might go, I think it goes like this. Oh, and they come back and go, oh, Mr. Paul, Mr. Oh, Paul, oh, I can oh, wait. I've I worked, worked out, out the whole thing. <laughs> yes. Yeah, isn't that so great? You're empowering them to teach themselves. And this, to me, is what is absolutely critical because down the track, what are they going to want to do? They're going to want to play songs that they've heard on the radio. Well, 
Won't be the radio. Eh? <laughs> These kids are Spotify, <laughs> YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, you are you are helping them learn for the future and you are developing their oral skills as well as their reading skills. Mm, in the right order, importantly. I was going to ask you what the benefits are. We've kind of covered that. Are there other ones that come to mind? I mean, I can already see and I imagine listeners will be able to go, oh, yeah, that does make a lot of sense. <laughs> well, it's obviously with um, – you, you can use whole body learning with any piece of music, really. Um, I mean, I, I have seven students in my grade seven class at the moment who are doing their grade seven. And uh, one of the pieces was a quite a tricky piece that had lots and lots of rhythmical challenges in it, which is not a, it's an easy piece if you're good at rhythm. <laughs> You know, as, as is the case with most exam exam repertoire, if they have if it has difficult rhythm, they put they put it in. My kids learned that piece, a seventh grade piece, in three weeks, um, because they could do the rhythm. So we we went through and we moved the rhythm. We put it in our body. All they needed to learn was the notes. The notes were the easy part. You you also do. I think it's an off. You, you taught me this ages ago. You do, I think it's an off thing where you put words to rhythms as well. But that's part of the whole body approach too, isn't it? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. To try and get them, in again, in the body, get those rhythms in the body by singing, chanting, etc. Exactly, exactly. So I suppose one of the things that I've identified through my research that I'm working on at the moment is from a cognitive neuroscience science perspective that what we need to do is create an interactive learning environment. And that interactive learning environment is going to provide active listening experiences. So, and, you know, this might be a video, an audio recording, a backing track or a teacher performance, but the student has to be actively engaged because you need that engagement. You've got their attention, now you need to engage them. It's going to involve singing and chanting, or and as you said, they're going to be moving and to the music, and um, they'll probably be playing melodic or non-melodic percussion instruments. And then the other bit that I love, which is improvising and adding that to what they've learned, taking what they've already done and then changing it some way. Mm, mm. And yep. um, yeah, so that's basically. What you know, I, I suppose an inter, inter, interactive learning environment for piano teachers is going to involve. Mm. And this is exactly what we're going to be actually going deep into and unpacking in this course, which is coming up. Just before we talk about the course, is this something that can be used for students of all ages? Is there a bottom or a top end of the age spectrum that it like doesn't work for? I haven't found one yet. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just musicality. That's the thing, right? It, it's, it's it's just music. Yeah, it's, it's just, just and it's not sort just, of it's not babyish or childish. Your teenagers won't mind it. Adults won't mind. Like it's it's just good musicianship and music making. I think that's yeah, what there's nothing it, and there's nothing there's really nothing new in it. It's taking what these educators from over a hundred years ago were saying, but it's just applying it to piano lessons. So let's talk about this course coming up because I am super excited about it. Um, maybe could you tell us a little about it, how it works? Because it's actually a lot. This is a live cohort course, which I think is I'm now realizing. I think I'm, maybe I've always realized it, but having a live group of teachers together is just such a buzz, number one. But two, you just get so much more from it. So that's exactly what we're doing. Tell us um, what people can expect. Well, we have, there's four sessions, um, and for the first three, we have our expert, Tim Topham, joining us for, for this, which I'm, I'm very excited about. I think about. I'm just the host. You're the expert, mate. <laughs> <laughs> no. yeah. So we're starting on the 1st of August, and we have three, the first three sessions around about 90 minutes. Have uh, we ever finished after 90 minutes? I don't think so. <laughs> we, we try. <laughs> we try our best. But teachers being teachers, we love to have a, a natter. And, um, and the other thing is that you get to ask questions and that's where it's, that really, really adds 
to the knowledge. And we learn together. And that's that's a really critical part. But there is some homework. There is uh, a couple of bits of homework where teachers get the opportunity to try out some whole body learning strategies and they can do them on on their students or they can just do it themselves. But you can use any repertoire. We have a whole heap of repertoire that you could that you can use, or you can take your own repertoire, like tutor books that you like using and utilize the core, utilize the strategies and see how you go. So, and I suppose the real value is in sharing all of that information with each other um, because you learn from what other people are doing. And we'll be, both um, Tim and I will be uh, putting comments on people's videos and things like that. But our Facebook group for the, this, for this course, um, where it gets locked up after the for after the course, but it you still got access to it, and you can watch all the other videos that people have been watching and and so learning from, and so it sort of becomes like this amazing resource library for the future as well, which is I just find so valuable for people. And this really is a course for people who are willing and ready to be engaged and to share and um, to communicate. And this isn't the kind of course where it's chalk and talk. We're going to drone on at you for 90 minutes. You're going to take some notes and then go home, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely not that. <laughs> no. In fact, it's probably, you know, uh, sort of cameras on at your piano some, at, at some stages. Yep. Yeah, if you can, um, if pe- if people can, I mean, we've we've had such wonderful feedback from teachers all over the world. Um, so we had, I think we had around four hundred teachers participate in the program in January. So it was just so exciting, and the feedback we've received, you know, with teachers saying, you know, the biggest takeaway. I'm just reading one of the um, from uh, Gabriel, um, who's in Sydney, said. You know, understanding that all of the things we do have to have a purpose and a reason. So, and that's just so critical, isn't it? We, you know, we don't. Want, we've got. We have these kids for maybe thirty minutes every week. We've got to make every second count. So everything that we do has to have a purpose. And Lauren, I think from the US, said she said every aspect of professional development has been so valuable and. She said her greatest takeaway was teaching chords and chord playing from a young age. And I, I know you're a passionate uh, believer advocate in advocate of that. Absolutely. Teaching chords. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and something I've learned heaps from is watching your videos. I don't know if you plan to share any of your teaching videos in this program, but you with your kids on the floor singing and chanting and that is always, I've learned so much by just watching you teach. I think it's amazing. Oh, thank you. Well, there's there's going to be a, f- a few of them. My kids have all grown up now. They're all teenagers. <laughs> <laughs> They're all taller than me now. <laughs> they used to be so little and cute. <laughs> uh, no, it's really, really good. And uh, I, I've learned so much from you uh, over time, and I'm going to learn more during this this course. So I'm really excited to be working with you on this, Paul. I think it's going to be a great help to teachers who, as you say, at the moment, there's a lot who are battling the but the burnout from the students who aren't engaged anymore. They're not practicing. The parents don't seem to really care too much. Like There's, there's a lot of that at the, around at the moment. And I think this course really speaks to the underlying principles of our pedagogy that can really get us out of that funk, that rut. And so I'm really excited to be bringing it to to the world. And this is research backed. This is tested. Paul's been doing this for his whole career. He's built up to this point and has run this course with hundreds of people, as you say. <laughs> yes, this is a um, this has been a thirty year well so far thirty year passion. We've been doing whole body learning in our forte schools for thirty years this year, and um, we've seen the success you know, with, with the students. And I think, you know, like, yes, we've had some amazing successes. I've had a couple of students that have gone on to be, uh, you know, uh, to tertiary and, you know, studying music and things like that. But I think that if we can give children music for life, then that is something so valuable. And 
the only way that they're going to be able to have music for life is that if they can operate as a musician, not just a pianist. And so this is really about helping develop those musical skills so that students can actually develop into musicians. Well, I think that's a great way to wrap things up, um, Paul. So the cost of the course is just $149. That's for everything, including access to Paul's resources. There's downloads and tracks to play along with all sorts of things. So $149. If you're a Top Music Pro member, then your cost is just $29. And we have all the links that you need on our show notes page for today's episode. Um, Anything else to add, Paul, before we wrap things up? No, just thank you very much for having me, Tim. And thank you for joining me for this course. I'm looking forward to working with you again. I'm really looking forward to it as well. So we will see everybody in August, hopefully. Uh, Come on and join the course. You will not be disappointed. And I can guarantee you'll have a whole lot of fun hanging out with us and all the other teachers as well. So thanks again, Paul. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Well, I really hope that that's got you a little bit inspired and excited about this course coming up and I hope you're going to join us. It's going to be a great opportunity to connect, share and obviously learn some new skills that can really make a difference in your teaching, particularly for these Generation Alpha students. They are not the same as the ones we had 15, 10, 15, 20 years ago. So let us help you with some strategies and resources, which is really going to change the outcomes for the students in your studio. Now, as I promised at the top of the episode, I would love to give you $20 off if you'd like to come and join us on the course. So the coupon code you need is US20POD, US20POD. That's going to give you $20 off the US price of the Teaching Beginners course with Whole Body Learning. So the link you need to go to to save your seat on this course is topmusic.co slash wholebody. That's one word, wholebody. Well, I've had a great time hanging out with you and Paul today. I hope you've enjoyed it and uh, are going to come along to that course. It's going to be fantastic to explore all of those ideas with a group of teachers from all around the world. So I look forward to seeing you there, topmusic.co slash wholebody. And until then, I will catch up with you this same time next week. Look forward to it. Bye-bye, everyone. How do you keep up to date with all the latest trends and research into music education? How do you connect with other teachers around the world and make sure your teaching stays fresh and relevant for students of all ages and stages both now and into the future? I created our Top Music Pro membership to be the one-stop shop for music teaching resources, training, support and community and I'd love for you to come and join us inside. With over 40 comprehensive training courses, hundreds of teaching demonstrations and lesson plans, free monthly sheet music, discounts and all the business and pedagogy support you could ever need, Top Music Pro is the community you've been looking for. If you're ready to level up your learning from the podcast and join thousands of other teachers in our global network, head over to topmusicpro.com today. If you enjoy this show and want to hear more of our work, be sure to subscribe to this podcast wherever you're listening today. For links and resources mentioned in this episode, visit us at topmusic.co slash podcast or check out the show notes. I'm Tim Topham. Thank you so much for listening. Enjoy your week ahead and I'll catch you next time.